Hello, my name is Veronika Liškova. I'm the director of the documentary film Daniel's World. Daniel's World is a portrait of 25-year-old uh, aspiring writer who was born with very uneasy sexual orientation. He is a pedophile and my film captures uh, private and public moments of his confession. And it's also a story of forbidden love which can be in fact never fulfilled. Hello, I'm Zdeněk Holý, I'm the producer of Daniel's World and it's the film about one man who never abuses child. So it means that not all pedophiles are abusers of child. Tenkrát mě úplně zvláštně otevřelo oči, že se nemusím bát nebo stydět se vůbec na dítě podívat. Nebo se mu kouknout do očí, nebo se na něj usmát. Takové věci do té doby pro mě byly skoro nemyslitelné. Prostě myslel jsem si o sobě, že se musím dětem úplně vyhýbat. Po tomhle setkání jsem se taky rozhodl, že se chci přidat k pedofilní komunitě a nabrat takových zkušeností víc. Pak mi kontakt s pedofily vlastně pomohl víc, než ta návštěva samotného sexuologa. Welcome to the Berlin Hour and uh, to the Teddy Awards too and uh, thank you so much for bringing this film which after I watched it I was really um, struggling with how I can approach this you in this interview and um, it brought up of course I guess with a lot of viewers a lot of moral moralistic questions and um, <clears throat> we also had in Germany a big um, issue with a politician recently mm -hmm. uh, that was dealing with um, I don't affair. want to say the same thing. Yeah, it's, uh, and, then, and then again, when I was thinking about this this affair we had in Germany, you know, it's such a complex because I don't really think you can compare these um, two men, but it definitely has uh, deals with pedophile and like the um, questions around it. Mm. And my first question is a really simple question: How did you get into touch with that topic and then with this man, mm. Daniel? I think that Zdeněk should start with okay. the answer. Because, As the producer, yeah. The producer. Uh, because, yes, because I addressed Veronica with this topic. I told her if she's willing to do a documentary oh, okay. about good pedophile, if, right. you, if we can say that way. Yeah. So I addressed her and I'm very happy and for many years after she said yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is and the beginning of the story or the beginning of the story is maybe that uh, one night I was watching TV news uh, night news and there was a story or more news about criminal pedophile who committed terrible crime and I told myself okay I know this story I heard it so many times before so maybe there's at least one pedophile who never committed a crime and we didn't know anything about how many never commit crimes so we get known this fact during research so I addressed Veronica because she's a really sensitive director and I was quite sure that she can present pedophile as a human being because uh, most of the society considered them as not being human beings. Yeah, so that was the reason I addressed Veronica and I was really happy she agreed to do the movie. So how did I? Yeah, I just wanted to say that of course that I'm happy that Zdenik approached me with this idea but at the time when he called me for the first time I wasn't happy at all or I was I can't say that I wasn't happy, but I was very, very surprised. And to be honest, at the beginning, I couldn't imagine that I would direct a film on this topic because I was full of stereotypes. I have complete lack of information on the issue. So it took me a while to think it through and just to, to I had to make some initial research just to be sure that I would be able to refer to the topic and that even I would be willing to refer to the topic because before that I, I really, in my head, pedophile equaled uh, child molester. I didn't know that uh, people are just born with this orientation and, and that most of them never, never molest children, that there are, they are many like non-criminal pedophiles and I didn't know that people who often uh, molest children are in fact no pedophiles. 
these are people with uh, very often heterosexuals who are twisted in, in minds, who have problems with, with their personalities. And unfortunately, child is very often just the, the easiest target to approach. <clears throat> because my, another question I had immediately is like, where do you begin to pathologize it in a way? Like, label it as a, a disease or like a, you know, psychiatric disorder or something? And where is it, um, yeah, how do you define that? How do I you label that? I Can you label it? I think there is no consensus about this mm. even uh, within the uh, sexologists, even the professionals. Mm. Because one thing is that it's obvious that people are born with this orientation. Like, mm. So, and the question is, shall we classify it really as a disease? Or because this is how the entire debate around homosexuality began too. So, you know, at first you had a labeled as a disease and there's a really important thing that disease is defined that you have some physical or psych psychological disorder that you are not able to live a sufficient life with. Mm -hmm. so if you are able to live a sufficient life then it shouldn't be considered as a disease mm -hmm. so if uh, you find a pedophile who can have normal life with his preferences sexual preferences then then it shouldn't be disease. So but what does it mean to have a normal life? Because once you begin to live it, in a way, your life can become very quickly abnormal, huh? or abnormal mm. in terms of... Let's say not to commit suicide, let's say not to live life under permanent depression, mm. just to be able to live a life without mm. having, of course, normal sexual life, without, but without having relationships but to be able to survive. And not abuse children. Not yeah, be, be, mm -hmm. behave in a legal way and uh, have a life when you don't need to be on therapy, you don't need to be all the time on drugs or something like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some sexologists in Czech Republic, they started to refer to pedophilia not as a, to a sexual orientation, but, but as to a sexual variation. Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. I, sh I think that I should leave this in their hands because they yes. are professionals. But you know, it's it's not easy topic to approach, and in fact, that there's a lack of data, a lot of statistics, because people usually don't come out easily, mm -hmm. and they don't come, uh, say openly that they are pedophiles. So it's hard to collect data and just to, to make some proper research. So I think that's that's the problem because we are bombarded with all these, you know, academic research and statistics, and then all of a sudden in your film we are being familiarized with um, Daniel in a way that very personal life. And um, how did this help you, like that personal confrontation and getting to know him and his life, to maybe understand that topic a little mm. better? Or? Well, I really, like the biggest fight with my stereotypes, I experience really at the beginning mm -hmm. of the research and afterwards it wasn't only Daniel who convinced me that that it's worth telling this kind of story I met like 20 or 30 people from the community before meeting Daniel so I heard their stories and, and even after meeting a first person from the community who was willing to meet me even Zdenek was there with me at our first meeting, I was completely sure that this is something what, what need uh, what is necessary to tell. And I started to believe that uh, the art of the documentary maybe is the best tool how to approach this very very uneasy topic. And it was not easy for us. I remember when we was returning from the first meeting with the file. We had a really high emotions. We were in turmoil because, of course, it was um, against our instincts. Yeah, because he talked about the issue openly, and we weren't used to talk about it openly. So we had a lot of emotions in us. I remember when we were returning. It was two, hour, two hours journey in the car, and we, and we, on one side, we were moved by our emotions. On the other side, we tried to make a jokes from it because it was really unbearable. So it was, it was even difficult for us to work with this topic. Mm -hmm. what, so what did you learn? Like, what did you? How long? How long did you accompany him? Mm -hmm. Like, well, I during the research phase, I was meeting him like for 
six months maybe, and then the shooting period to one year. And afterwards also we, we kept meeting during the post-production and even now we meet up for coffees and so on. For me, um, one of the big lessons I took from this was that you, you, you can very easily think that you are kind of quite educated person yeah. and you, some, you find yourself that you, the, you have complete lack of information about certain issues. And my, I, myself, I must say that I felt kind of even ashamed that I never tried to find out more about this topic, that I was really thinking about this issue only uh, on in a way media represent the topic. So that was one thing. Of course, it was also, I went through a very personal fight with my own stereotypes. And I, I cannot say that I now feel 100% comfortable when I, for example, hear people from the community making even very fragile jokes about children and so on. It's still something hard for me to accept because, of course, the children is really something, child, child, something we should protect the most. Some still somehow sometimes hesitant how to how to look at it and so on but I must say that I 100% trust Daniel I really believe that he found his way to deal with his fate with his destiny and when you see somebody like that it's also a huge lesson because then you find yourself in a position that you discover that your problems are not that big sometimes yes. as you thought because for example me I cannot imagine myself living with this kind of orientation without any perspective or, or having normal relationship or having family and so on so anybody who managed mm -hmm. to find his small stable life even with having this crazy fate it's just some it's somebody would really deserve huge appreciation but from what I understand it's not a um, like determined diagnosis that they will never be able to fall in love with like an older person for example it's it's a preference of course but it's you know a variation well, like you said, it's a variation it but it really depends you know what I was very often told by like what the sexologists very often mention and I was when we even we were meeting them together at the beginning is that the sexuality is a, like a pie some people, they have only one color of the pie. Some people, they have more colors. And it depends how big pieces are, are in this pie. And in the film, there is a scene with the sexologist, and he is, exactly. uh, and he is diag diagnosing him. And he says... When, uh, when he's measuring? The yeah, and yeah, he's measuring. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he says to him, OK, it's really sad that uh, your spectrum is not wider. You are really uh, uh, focused on this group of young boys. Unfortunately, you can't have uh, adult partners, actually. That it's not a little bit moved. So this is what the sexologist just told him. Mm -hmm. So it's really sad. And uh, it's not it's not it on, on the brain. It's the, on, on, on penis. This, oh, yeah, okay. this test is made on penis. OK. OK. Wow. OK. So. Do you think that he feels comfortable or satisfied or is because I, I don't I mean it's it's uh, the I mean if you don't live your sexual it's, it's a really high risk of depression and there's frustration and how do you participate in life and I think it's a fight for a whole life in the film he says okay I I found my way how to live without normal sexual life but of course, it's issue. Yeah, I think that sexuality is one thing. Another thing is living without a partner, without having um, a real, real relationship. You know, so there are many, many things, and I think this is, you know, it's it's really fight for whole life, mm -hmm. just to be able to overcome this and to to at least to, to have your small moments or happiness, even without without the uh, like relationships and sexual life and which, which are very important things for 
most of us. This is going to be easier for him. As he's getting older, mm. and the desire won't be so strong, so it's good for him to get older. Um, what, just as to conclude, what is the, the reaction of the audience? Like, How do people react to it? What do they ask? I must say that we were both quite surprised even after the first screening in our country, like that the reactions were extremely positive. We had the Czech premiere at the uh, Yehlava International Documentary Film Festival and we won their audience award, which was something we completely didn't expect. So the reactions were very, very positive. Usually when we meet negative reactions, these are the reactions of people who uh, who haven't seen the film yet, so who have problems with the topic itself. Like afterwards, usually when people convince themselves to see the film, they are more positive. And of course, very often they have to swallow the topic. They they don't come to you immediately after the screening and say, "Oh, this is a great film, thank you." But so very often they come and say, "Thank you that you made me think." Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is something I really appreciate. Great, thank you so much for bringing this film and kind of like stirring a new discussion or like a more public discourse around that. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. thank you for the interview.